Unless I haven't been paying attention, man, the moon doesn't look normal. You keep the pressure on, correct? We stay until we win, is that right? At the moment, you're under arrest for incitement. Have you guys been following me? We're winning, folks. Okay, we're winning. We're pushing back the dark. You ask simply two questions to find a filthy Freemason de Molay. Where did you go to school? Which primary school? Which high school? And who's your daddy? Just a quick content warning for today. We'll be talking about some confronting stuff this week, so please look after yourself. G'day, this is Tinfoil Tales coming at you live from the Bush Telegraph. I'm Sandy. Hello, Governor. I'm Sauce. Okay, Anzacs, it's time for Boots on the Ground. We're going to talk about one of the most interesting characters in the freedom movement. We all know her. We all love her. Yep, it's Karen Brewer. Hey. I'll update you on Canberra, and then we'll share a random tinfoil tale at the end just for a little bit of fun. But before we start, let's just take a moment to talk about mental health. Many people who are already aware of Karen will immediately assume she has a mental illness. She has never come out publicly about having a mental illness and we are definitely not qualified to diagnose her, nor would we want to do that. People with these beliefs of mental health was discussed on the Conditional Release Program podcast, episode 41, where Joel brought on his dad, Richard Hill, who is extremely qualified to speak on this topic and even has his own podcast called The Science of Psychotherapy. And we recommend when you have a moment to go revisit that episode or listen to it if you haven't already. But the main message is they don't always have a mental illness and people with mental illness don't always behave like this either. So we can't just assume. We don't know what led Karen to her beliefs, but they are deep seated and she appears to have had them for some time. What we want to explore today is her story and the influence she has had over the freedom followers, whether they realise it or not. We reckon she really believes in her cause. This isn't a grifter or influencer. She really believes she's onto something and has a solution and desperately wants to get people mobilised, which might explain her odd behaviour at times. Okay, where do you start with Karen Brewer? Freemason, Demolays, Bill Heffernan, issuing writs, weird fascinations with cemeteries and pyramids. There's a lot to get through and I doubt that we'll cover everything. I first saw Karen on Twitter, actually. It was quite early in the pandemic. Someone shared a video of her and she'd gone to the shops and she was wearing a Ned Kelly helmet rather than a mask. So then I had to find her. So I jumped on Facebook and used to watch her doing these deep dives where she would have paper stuck up on the wall, like that conspiracy theory meme. And she'd step you through how people were Freemasons. She seemed incredibly well-researched and her followers lapped it up and there were a lot of followers. Yeah, I didn't have to follow Karen's socials too closely to know what she was up to because Karen stands out. Her rants and videos were shared to me by many people in my circle, so I didn't need to keep tabs on her. Karen is very popular inside the movement, but also with those that watch the movement too. She might be the most popular one, actually, or at least the most terrifying. But I did do a deep dive in preparation for this episode where I went back to the beginning and took in all her content from start to finish, which was a mammoth task. And I did that so you, listener, don't have to. But it was fascinating to replay out her story and with hindsight, realising the influence she actually did have here which we will explain later on. So Karen's shtick is pretty much centred around Freemason demolays and that Bill Heffernan speech, and that everyone in power, every policeman, every judge, every TV star, every celebrity chef, members of the royal family, all Freemasons, every single one of them. How does she know this? Well, she researches everything about them, where they went to primary school, high school, university, who they might have worked with, who they were married to, what little athletics clubs did they go to. She looks at everything and then she'll link a school to a symbol. Maybe it's in their school's logo or the shape of a building at the school. And from here, she determines a link to Freemasonry. Here's an example. G'day everybody, Karen Brewer here live from the Bush Telegraph with a quick history lesson. King Edward II of England was married to Isabella from France. Isabella was having an affair with Count Roger Mortimer, which is where we get the saying from, needs a good rogering. 
Beware of those with a chequered past, because it turns out Edward and Il- Isabella's son turned out to be King Edward III, and he was the king that created the Order of the Garter. The controversial issue, issue for King Edward III was his love of rogering other Rogers. And that's where we get the House of Lords. It turns out, folks, they're all dirty Freemasons. The Order of the Garter. Go look it up. Horrifying medal. Someone standing on the head of the serfs. That's the, that's the medal. Have a look for it. Bye, folks. I'm not sure that's true. I did look it up but couldn't find any solid reference to it anywhere. Maybe listeners can, but for the sake of this, we'll lean into it. What is a Freemason Demolay, I hear some of you ask? Well, it's like the youth group of the Freemasons. As with the Masons, it is predominantly for boys, but girls can be part of Demolay under the guise of sweetheart, princess or duchess. Very antiquated names with old-fashioned roles and duties, much like the pageantry of the Freemasons. In Karen's world, this means it is the grooming program for the Freemasons. Which is why she always says, what school did you go to and who's your daddy? One thing Karen does better than everyone else's repetition, though, the same phrase in every post every day, such as coming at you live from the Bush Telegraph or the jig is up. When she speaks, she repeats herself as if to drill the message into her followers to ensure they get it. She stares down the camera. Her voice gets almost hypnotic. Monotonal, she draws you in, while other influencers like Monica dart their eyes every which way. Karen, make sure she has your attention. Look into her eyes. Don't you dare look away. She stays on message all the time, and when she changes tack, she makes a new catchphrase and starts all over again. Repeat the message and hypnotise. She reminds me of that hypnotist skit for anyone who used to watch Little Britain, where the guy used to go, look into my eyes, look into my eyes, directly into my eyes, not around my eyes. That's who Karen reminds me of when she gets on that live. Her approach to uncovering alleged pedophiles isn't without repercussions, though. In September 2020, Karen was found guilty of defaming a National Party MP, her husband, and a charity that they ran together. And she was actually ordered to pay $875,000 in damages, and she needed to remove all related content. Back in 2020, she had shared a number of posts that accused the MP of being a member of a secretive pedophile network who had been parachuted into Parliament to protect a past generation of pedophiles. The MP spoke about having to install security cameras at her home, actually, because she actually feared that she might be physically attacked. Then in January 2021, the same MP sought a custodial sentence in the New Zealand courts. Karen had moved to New Zealand by then and she had posted a further three defamatory posts. Karen said that she'd requested Facebook to take them down and they subsequently were and she was fined a further $5,000. I don't believe she actually coughed up any of that money, but in an interesting twist, her New Zealand property is currently up for sale for pretty much exactly the same amount as the fine. So that's a brief summary of one of her main talking points, Freemason de Malay. But where does Bill Heffernan fit into this? Okay, so stay with me. Between 1995 and 1997, there was a Royal Commission into the New South Wales Police Service known as the Wood Royal Commission. During this commission, they found a lot of instances of bribery, money laundering, drug trafficking, fabrication of evidence, heaps of stuff. But I don't think anyone would be surprised that there was some dodgy stuff happening in New South Wales at that time. While the Royal Commission was in session, ICAC, which is Independent Commission Against Corruption, referred a matter regarding the possibility of collusion between organised pedophile networks and the senior ranks of the New South Wales Police Service and Judiciary. The Commission was highly critical of police, prosecutors and public servants in their approach to the prosecution of sex offences against minors and made comprehensive recommendations for the reform of police and public service procedures in dealing with child victims of sexual offences. However, the inquiry also debunked the most sensational allegations and was emphatic that there was no compelling evidence for the existence of a large network of prominent people, senior officers or the legal fraternity. So what's all that got to do with Bill Heffernan? You know what? I'm going to quote a couple of paragraphs from an article written by Tom Tanaki on the subject of pedophile ring delusion. 
There was a now notorious speech that ex-Liberal Senator Bill Heffernan made in 2015 to a Senate estimates hearing. Bill said that secret police documents name a list of 28 high-profile pedophiles purportedly suppressed from public view by the government. His speech was a clarion call for conspiracists across Australia that continues to ring. Today, you hear talk of exposing the 28 all-around anti-lockdown protests. Now, to be fair, Bill also used fake evidence in 2015 to accuse a justice of the High Court of being a pedo. He also once pretended to be an ACO agent. So Bill is not, in our view, to be relied upon for a fair accounting of institutional pedophilia. But whether Bill lied or embellished is now irrelevant. The 28 has long since become an item of conspiracist folklore. Given the amount of alleged names I've heard bandied around, there's got to be more than 28 on that list. (laughs) Pretty much every person they don't like has ended up on that list. Dan Andrews is on that list now too, apparently. Uh, T.D. Weenie Malcolm did get himself offside not that long ago because he actually put out a video saying he had looked extensively for the alleged suppression order and it didn't exist. But they've worked out a way around that. The other day I heard them saying that not only is there a suppression order on the list, there's a suppression order on the suppression order and that That's why we can't find it. They do make me laugh. (laughs) Okay, so now we know about Freemason Demolay and also the alleged suppression order. So let's talk about where Karen started and what influence she was having on the movement on both sides of the ditch. To begin with, Karen claims she started standing in the park alongside Brady Gunn. But according to Kaz, he did the dirty on her and locked her out of the Facebook group that she'd actually created. She was also associated with Billy Tikahika, infamous Q influencer in the New Zealand in New Zealand and Graham Jeffs of the Aussie Patriot Trail. But it should be known that Karen was never really able to work alongside anyone else. To be honest, it's her way or Eurodemoly. She is not good at playing well with others. She believes that she is the Oracle and that everyone else is just getting in her way. She was booted from Facebook and Instagram a fair while ago. And while she does still post from many, many sock accounts over there, she really communicates via Telegram and weekly Zoom calls. She was actually quite smart there. She set up these weekly Zoom calls. They've been going for a while. And she uses them really to educate her followers on how to find Freemasons in their midst. The highlight of these Zoom calls, though, is 100% the people who log on. There's a guy who logs on and he never wears a shirt. Like this old guy never wears a shirt. (laughs) Yeah, and at one point they all had colanders on their heads. So there's the senior man, no shirt, but he's got a colander on his head. So funny. She wanted them to practice being larrikins and told them all to come to the Zoom meeting wearing a colander on their heads to protect against the strains. Get it? (laughs) So Karen... (laughs) Oh, she makes me laugh. So Karen was just doing her thing, posting about Freemason, Demolay, filth, costume thugs, that's her name for the police, and blah, blah, Bill Heffernan. Then a video started circulating about seemingly whack idea that Karen had come up with. I do wonder if any of our listeners remember Karen Brewer Day, August 31st, 2021. Some may have forgotten, as that was also the day that was overshadowed by the huge news and live video stream of Monica filming her own arrest. Karen Brewer was also arrested that day, but no one talks about that. Except we will today. Forget Monica. This episode is all about Karen. There was a long lead up to August 31st, like months and months of a lead up, with Karen prepping and reminding her loyal followers, or Anzacs as she liked to call them, that at exactly 9am on August 31st to put boots on the ground, stand in silence and face your governor. Demand the writs for a fresh election, the unredacted Bill Heffernan papers, and clear the parliament of all that filthy Freemason demolays. Karen was getting fed up with the influencers and leaders of the rallies, yak, yak, yakking, walking around the streets, meeting at bloody Flinders Street Station. No one's there, she'd say. Get to your governor's house, your council buildings, face your enemy. No more letters, no more petitions, no more pieces of paper and no more speeches. It's time for change. Hey everybody, it's Karen Brewer here coming at you live from the Bush Telegraph. Yeah, Lockdown Victoria again, you know. Yeah, yeah. And all those so-called freedom warriors, you know, those freedom warriors people. Yeah. They told everyone to go down to Flinders Street Station. 
Yeah, yeah, all these people turned up at Flinders Street Station. Politicians aren't at Flinders Street Station. No. Nah. No. Nah. And so all those leaders told people to gather at the Flinders Street Station. Hey, Flinders Street Station. Nobody's fucking there, OK? State Governor don't live at Flinders Street Station. People in Victoria, wake the fuck up. You need to start questioning these so-called leaders, <coughs> excuse me, who keep running you around in fucking circles, eh? Because the fact of the matter is the state governor in Victoria holds the reserve powers to dismiss the state government. Right. It's not the first time. It's not the first time these so-called bullshit artists have led the people to Flinders Street Station. Right? Complete waste of fucking time. Nobody's at Flinders Street Station. The pollies aren't there. No. No, Linda Desiu doesn't live at Flinders Street Station. Okay? Now, you people need to smarten up. Right? You want to make change happen? You want to make change happen? Tuesday the 31st of August. Stand up. Gather at your local council chambers, your state parliament house and the home of the state governor, Linda Desiu. Okay. And you people need to start having a real close look at who these bloody leaders are, right? These so-called freedom warriors. Because I can tell you now, standing around Flinders Street Station, chanting, we will not be locked down. We won't be locked down. Guess what? Hey, you've w woke up this morning and you're fucking locked down. And nobody had the balls to front Linda Desiu, Right? Now, you people need to start questioning these so-called fucking leaders and you need to get fucking smart and you need to do it fucking quick, right? <sighs> 25 days from now, Anzac, we are going to gather both sides of the ditch in great numbers at every seat of parliament. We're not negotiating with these people no more, you get that? We've sent every letter, we've made every phone call, we've attended every rally, we're all fucking aware, and there was more than enough people at Flinders Street la Station last night to apply enough pressure to Linda Desiu. But did they lead you there, these so-called leaders? Did they lead you to Linda, hey, to the person that actually holds the reserve power to dismiss Parliament? No. These fucking frauds ran you around in fucking circles when the politicians aren't in the Parliament House and nobody's standing at Flinders Street Station. For fuck's sake, wake up. Tuesday, the 31st of August, beginning at 9am. Gather at your local council chamber. Gather at the State Parliament House. And make sure there's fucking hundreds of thousands at the home of Linda Desiu. Because we're not negotiating with these people no more, you get it? We want the documents Senator Heffernan produced to the Royal Commission under an order to produce, released to the people, unredacted, and the writs for a fresh election issued. So next time, <clears throat> some of these freedom, these freedom people that keep telling you, all oh, gather at the Flinders Street Station, you take it right up to these fucking frauds, and say we're gathering at Linda Desiu's home, the home of the state governor there, in the botanical gardens in Victoria. You fuck all these people out, right? You call these people out because they're running you in circles and leading you nowhere and the clock's bloody ticking. We got lawless politicians. We got a lawless police force. And you got bullshit artists asking you to stand at Flinders Street Station, so wake the fuck up. You pass this on to everyone you know in Victoria. You want to give me a call? No problem. My number is plus six four two seven double five zero double four six eight. We got a lawless police force arresting elderly people, kicking people in faces, dragging people off park benches. You don't got time. You don't got time to fuck around with bullshit artists, Anzac. Make sure everyone in Victoria sees this bloody video. Bye, folks. You can really feel her frustration at the other leaders who she felt were doing meaningless work. See, Karen's plan for August 31st was to have hundreds of thousands of people in Australia and New Zealand gather en masse at exactly 9am out the front of their federal and state parliaments, local council chambers and the residence of their governor-generals. 
they were to stand in complete silence. If anyone spoke, others were to turn to that person and shush them. No signs, no noise. They were to stand 10 steps away at first, but at exactly 12 o'clock, one whistle would blow and the assembled crowd would take one step towards the building. One whistle, one step at a time. Right. Now this is what's going to happen. The governors hold the reserve powers to dismiss parliaments and issue writs for a fresh election. Tuesday, 31st of August, beginning at 9am, you will gather at your local council chambers. You will gather at your state parliament. But most importantly, you will gather at the homes of your governors. You get it? Okay? To the people that actually have the reserve power to dismiss parliaments. Now, we ain't negotiating with these people no more. You get that? Yeah. There are going to be no signs, no placards, no speeches. The Anzac is going to rise on Tuesday, the 31st of August, beginning at 9am in total silence. We ain't negotiating with these people. You get that? They got till 12 noon to step themselves down. And if they don't, then those governors, they got 10 minutes to decide. Yeah. You're going to release those documents that Senator Heffernan produced to the Royal Commission under an order to produce. You're going to release them to the people unredacted. We've had enough of your fucking deceit, lies, cover up and bullshit. Yeah, we know. We know every corruption hinges on those documents, details, big and small. And those governors, they're going to issue the writs for a fresh election. Because come 12 noon on Tuesday, the 31st of August, they're going to be 31 and a half million Anzacs mobilised both sides of the ditch. And we're gathering at every seat of government. That's right. Council chambers. State parliaments and the homes of those governors. Now you'll find that post, all that information and addresses posted on my Telegram account every day. We got nine days, people, and I need you to share this video. I need you to have this conversation with everyone in your street and, as a matter of fact, every contact in your phone. You get that? You got nine days to get this message out because no matter what, come Tuesday, the 31st of August, You will rise, Anzac, in silence and you will gather at one of these locations and together, you and me, we're going to get the job done. So stop twiddling your thumbs. Stop looking at other people to lead you. You've been doing that shit for 18 months and all these people are leading you around and around fucking circles. It's got to the point now where where your, your costumed thugs are actually firing upon your countrymen. Now wake the fuck up. Stop following these filthy people. Stand on your, the two feet the Creator gave you. We're not bullshitting about anymore, Anzac. Tuesday, 31st of August, beginning at 9am. Pick your location and be there no matter what. We stand for yourself, your family, your community and your country. No talking. We ain't negotiating with these people no more. They all got to go. So there ain't no talking. Anyone who dares speak on this day, you will be shushed by those around you. No mucking around here, people. We're standing. The Anzac stands. Tuesday, 31st of August, beginning at 9am, no matter what. Get the message out. 31 and a half million people need to be mobilised nine days from now. Dead set, there is no one scarier in this movement than Karen Brewer. So in Karen's head, this would be so terrifying to the people inside that they would all just freak out and do exactly what the lynch mob wanted. But in case they didn't, the plan was for the mob to just walk right in there, take the building over quietly and in an orderly fashion. (laughs) 
So how do we know all of this? Well, as we said earlier, Karen is in the business of simple, repetitive messaging. She started talking about this months and months before August 2021 and posted clips every single day. She also posted flyers and put them all over her telegram and copied them into everyone else's channels too. I saw those flyers absolutely everywhere. (laughs) With the benefit of hindsight, we now know what happened January 6, and this sounds awfully like that, but quiet and organised. No smashing of windows and scaling the walls were intended with this one. I mean, that's a perfectly reasonable idea. Initially, it was met with a fair bit of ridicule, to be honest. It was not seen as something that would ever happen, but she just kept talking about it every day. Daily video saying the same hypnotic message straight down the camera. We stand Anzac no matter what. Then something strange happened. More and more people started talking about it online. It started to get some momentum. Then she started posting flyers calling on truckies to help or unions to help and got a bit more momentum. Then some random truckie dudes started filming clips saying that they were going to block interstate borders and those videos were then shared and reshared across every platform. So that then forced the other influencers and leaders in the movement to say something about it. A few of the familiar names started to speak out. Millie Fontana, who helped organise the Melbourne protest, did a live a day or so before warning her followers that with recent terrorism changes to legislation, it's best not to attend this event. Tricky from the People's Revolution also had something to say about it. All right, guys, so I wanted to have a chat about what happened today in Queensland in terms of the uh, the trucky blockade that was done today. There's a few things we need to address, <clears throat> and the first being the dates. Now, the reason why these truckies decided to do today was the 31st was a Karen Brewer initiative. That's tomorrow. Now, I believe Karen is actually a passionate woman. A lot of people say she controlled opposition. I don't believe she's controlled opposition. She's a passionate woman that's trying to do things for the people. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean her plans are any good. Now, for the last six months, Karen has advertised the plan on the 31st is to go to every council chambers, every government building, stand out the front in silence, blow a whistle, take a step towards the building. Every 10 minutes, you take another step until you're inside the government building and you don't leave. Um, until they all step down. If they don't step down, you take the building over. Now, to me, that's publicly advertising. You're going to take a government building over. Um, to me, not the smartest idea. So the truckies got hold of me a few days ago, and they were saying that they don't want to have any association with the plan for the 31st. Um, and to be honest, guys, I've never, ever heard of any trucks being involved with the 31st um, until a few days ago we started seeing uh, flyers being made. Now, there's a big difference between advertising and actually organising and planning something. So keep that in mind, okay? So these truckies want to do their own thing uh, today, um, and that's the reason why. Now, Karen's recently even started talking about advertising for locksmiths to attend these events tomorrow and bring their locksmith tools. Now, what's he suggesting there? It's starting to get a little bit uh, a little bit awkward, if you ask me. Now, if you want to go along tomorrow, go for it. Go for it. Just be safe. Think about what's going on. And uh, think twice before you do things, guys, and look after each other. I'm not going to tell anybody not to go, all right? That's your own choice. I'm just telling you what I know so far. While others agreed to promote it, such as Harrison McLean, who promoted it alongside his Melbourne Freedom Rally group, and then we saw the familiar flyer that Karen created for the event start popping up on a few socials. And the result, as far as the numbers go, was mixed. New Zealand really didn't turn out for it, and Karen was left out the front of her council building getting arrested alone it was actually pretty sad and she was crushed that she was just there by herself but Australia well was a little bit better than we expected you would think people wouldn't dare attempt to plan like this but we already know that this is a movement of people who really want to speak to the manager and are heavily brainwashed into believing these people have got solutions they really trusted Karen and the others who supported her idea and they genuinely thought this one might work If I remember correctly, Soz, you, Joel, and I spent August 31st with a bunch of tabs open on our computer browsers, flicking through lives, witnessing the various gatherings all over Australia. And then I actually went to my local council, got in my car, drove myself down there, parked myself in the car park with a good view of the action. And to be honest, I was actually surprised anyone showed up. But about 50 Anzacs appeared. Some approached surreptitiously. 
not quite sure if they were in the right place. One car pulled up with an upside down flag flying and car horn tooting, and then they knew they were in the right place. They got pretty excited, but they did not follow directions. They were all standing around chatting. No one was shushing anyone. And I don't know if she should have assigned someone whistle duty because there were no whistles to be heard. Eventually, the cops came and people just kind of wandered away. Boo. But all over Australia, groups of various sizes turned up. Some were quiet and peaceful, but a few weren't. Noosa and Malambimbi was a standout gathering. They had a few hundred and they actually stood silent for a while. I kind of have to admit it was really eerie to see that. People standing facing a building, stone quiet. While Mwilamba had a bunch of protesters screaming and blowing the whistle at the cops who had made an arrest, which saw the protesters sitting down on the road in front of the cop car so they couldn't leave. Gold Coast had a large crowd, but they forgot the instructions also to remain quiet and were chanting, freedom, freedom, over and over at the building. A crowd of people turned up to the Brisbane governor's residence and lined the front gate and both sides of the road. Peter Little, though? Only one in Melbourne. A funny moment was at Government House in Sydney who had around 10 people standing about 100 metres away behind a fence as that's as close as they could get. Kind of reminds me of the Canberra crew yelling at Hurley over a lake. They can't hear you. But anyway, (laughs) the famous horse guy returned on his grey steed preaching about freedoms, which was funny, but the hands down most funniest moment of the day was Blacktown. See, Leading up to this day, Karen had introduced to the followers videos on crowd control tactics to use against the police if they felt they needed to. One of these tactics was for everyone to bring a scarf, then use those scarves to kettle the cops if they try to arrest you. And in Blacktown, they actually tried to do this. The cops swiftly got themselves out of the kettling and promptly arrested them anyway. <laughs> while Unbelievable. The not, while the, yeah, while the not-so-quiet crowd chanted, let her go, let her go. That might have been the highlight of the day for me. It's crazy. Back to the truckies, there was a sighting of two trucks that stopped at a roundabout in Ballina in front of the Ballina Council building. Ballina is a pretty small town and that might have been the only intersection they had. But anyway, there was about 100 people standing and they were so proud of themselves for doing their bit for the cause. Byron Shy had a couple of hundred show up. Perth had about 100, I would say. And down in Tassie, Sovsit Cuzzy, Andrew Morrisby and a small group rocked up to their government building only to have Andrew spectacularly arrested, sprouting his sovereign citizen nonsense all the way to the Divi van. Funny thing happened there too, though. While handcuffed, his partner got in between him and a policeman and dug into his jean pocket and he's sitting there and he's going, oh, yeah, baby, get in there, get in there. And she pulls out a red ensign flag and she opens up this flag (laughs) to the cops and then as they, they're like, all right, let's, this is enough of this garbage. So they go to put him in and then him and his partner just start pashing as, it, as he's getting pushed into the divvy van. Anyway, that was pretty good. Uh, I actually have put together a quick video of this day and we'll post it to Twitter and the Facebook shit posting group so you can see it. The police were putting out statements online everywhere and even the news had caught wind of what was happening, having these protests air on the nightly news on that day. They even closed Queensland's Parliament House. Uh, who took note? They, it was crazy. Like, who would have thought that she could get people to actually get Queensland Parliament to close because of these idiots that are just milling around out the front? I don't know. Well done, Karen, I think. <laughs> but let's get back to Karen and have a listen to what happened when she showed up to her local council building all alone in New Zealand during lockdown. And let's see how well she did standing in silence facing down her enemy. G'day Anzac. It's 9am now. I'm walking up Memorial Avenue, Anzacs. It's 9am. Kaikoui District Council Chamber. I'm walking up the road now. There's uh, about eight costumed thugs here, guys. Remember? No talking. Together we are mighty. It matters not if they arrest me. All the rest of you remain standing. 
Doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen. Remain standing at all times. I'm on the approach now, ladies and gentlemen. Because it's nine o'clock. And I know the others are coming. I hope, anyway. Either way, ladies and gentlemen, I would rather die on my feet than live on my knees. Two cops at the New World sign. There's six cops up in front. <coughs> Three police cars. But Anzac, we stand no matter what. Can you help me? be here. Ma'am, are you listening to me? You have to leave at the moment, okay? You have to leave here immediately or you will be arrested, okay? Are you going to leave? Order, COVID-19, you need to leave immediately or else you will be arrested. Are you going to leave? Okay, it's all right. So I'm placing you under arrest for to comply with a public health response order Supposed to be two and a half metres away. Good day, everybody. It's Karen Brewer. Hi, Fano. Just thought I'd let you know I'm okay. Um, I've got a few bowel conditions. Uh, I've got to stay at home, and uh, yeah. Anyway, just thought I know you'd all be worried, but uh, yeah, I'm back home now. All's good. Yeah, you guys have a great day. Bye. How polite was that policeman then? Two and a half metres away. Oops, Karen, forgot to remain silent and I did not see a whistle or a scarf. I will put the full clip on the shitposting group for visuals. But at one stage she turns to the camera, she turns like turns the camera 360 degrees and there are like seven or eight cops, three police cars and Karen. Also, her face at the end when she returned home without doubt having seen everyone turning up to their government buildings she looked smug. She ended up breaching her bail and subsequently went through the courts for that, but it was dismissed back in February. So Brewer Day was eventful and Karen did manage to mobilise people in the end. Monica Smith did a video just before her arrest praising Karen for her initiative of bringing out small rallies all over and said it actually was a good idea and that they had underestimated her. But no one broke into a building and writs were not issued along with unredacted documents. We do have to give her some kudos, though. Like, she really did do all of this by herself. Like, she really doesn't have too many friends in the movement. No one else really shares her content or anything. She's got no donation buttons. She doesn't have a fancy website. Really, other than Harrison and a couple that came out to support at the last minute, she really did do this all on her own. Just a lady ranting into her phone on social media. And while yet again another plan failed and the goal was not achieved because the goal was, let's be real here, delusional, the fact people showed up for her shows the sway she had. So while people can diminish her power by saying she has a mental illness, she was also very calculating and manipulative and that should not be lost on us. It should also be noted that many times her postings were bordering on radical ideas. When the Melbourne lockdown protests were happening, she was posting tips on throwing darts at media crews' vehicles to pop their tyres and letting people know that oven cleaner is caustic and flammable. Her plan to enter government buildings also crosses a line. We should be thankful that at least the followers who did mobilise knew not to be swayed that far. But many were arrested and likely had to deal with some negative consequences from that, which Karen will only praise them for and feel no guilt, even though we know 
they were merely pawns to Karen and her delusional ideas. So what's next for Kaz? Daily exercise walks to the council, more flyers, an Anzac Day march, which didn't really see much action. But this is where Karen decided a new strategy. Front up to your governor every day at 11 o'clock, play the final post, demand the suppression order unredacted, the writs for a new election. And on both sides of the ditch, something weird was happening. Small groups were forming in Perth and Wellington, fronting up to their governors, demanding the suppression order be lifted, the last post being blasted through buildings every day. In New Zealand, a young guy called David is just shows up every day, the same bloke every day. And in Perth, Lee was leading a small group of standers who would later become the Umbrella People. Hello, me and my brothers and sisters out here are standing here once again um, because we would like to invite the, um, the Governor General, Dame Cindy Cairo, out here to speak with us as uh, we believe that at this point the Parliament is uh, operating outside of their jurisdiction. We believe that we are under a corrupt corporation and uh, we would like to request the writs and while well, we demand the writs for a fresh election where we can um, decide for ourselves what's going to happen in our country here um, and again we believe that we're under a corrupt organization so we will be here every single day until we get those writs until we get a fresh election and we will not leave until we get what we came for thank you dissolve the western australian parliament and issue the writs for a fresh election do it today peter we'll be back again tomorrow see you then good morning security I would like to instruct you to coordinate with Governor-General David Hurley to ensure all the documents Senator Heffernan produced the Royal Commission are released to the people unredacted immediately. We will be here every day until you do as instructed. Thank you. The Umbrella People, born from Karen Brewer. These two groups have faced their governor's buildings and made their demands for over 200 days straight and they're still going. I just find that incredible, to be honest. But fast forward to February 2022, six months after Tuesday the 31st of August, Camp Epic happened. A crowd gathered around the Governor-General's. A Brewer follower named Dan stood up and played the last post and demanded the writs and suppression order unredacted. And a new dedicated group of Anzacs was formed. Crowds of freedom fighters stood outside the Gigi's house for weeks after and when the crowd finally dwindled to a handful and the authorities kicked them from the gates, Phil and his merry men and women marched across to the other side of the lake and started yelling at Bruce at David Harley. These Anzacs aren't fucking running. Anzac, every day both sides of the ditch. I do what I can to try and motivate you to stand. With that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, here goes. And sopranos aren't good for me. Anzac, where is the spring and the summer that once was yours and mine? Where did it go? I just don't know, but still my love for you will live forever. Come on, Anzac, come and stand with me at the governor, face the governor. Anzac, our love was much too strong to die. We'll find a way to make a new Again, I can do without you. Come on, Governor, issue the writs. Come on, Governor, the sooner the better. Come on, Anzac. Come on, Anzac, stand with me. Anzac, where is the dream? We were dreaming. And all the we shared Anzac where did they go I just don't know but 
I can tell you just how much I miss you. Come on and say, come and stand with me at the governor. Face the governor and say, our love was much too strong to die. We'll find a way to make a new me I cannot do it without you come on governor issue the writs come on governor the sooner the better come on Anzac come on Anzac stand with me come on Anzac come and stand with me I cannot The sooner the better. Come on, Anzac. Come on, Anzac. Stand with me. Sorry to do that to you. Haha. <laughs> she can hold a tune, to be fair. Like, I'll give her a due. She can actually sing. Um, like I said at the start, we wouldn't do justice to the many, many strings to Karen's bow. And we haven't even spoken about her strange fascination with cemeteries, her keen sense of architecture, or that she is a really, really big fan of the Tartarian Empire. Who knows? We might do a part two at some stage. Oh, yes. We have Freemasons to cover. And no doubt Karen will be moving on to other things. She isn't stopping while there are still filthy Freemason demolays still around to banish. So let's focus on Canberra. What's happening over there, Soz? <sighs> I actually wondered at the end of the last episode if we should even talk about Canberra anymore. It was getting really boring. They bloody sheets decided to go on a road trip with Tony Ant and Tony the Bard and some bloke in a kid's costume. I think he's called Wally. I don't know. But they need to keep that guy away from, like, childcare centres and stuff. Like, they seem to pull up out the front of childcare centres with an old man dressed as Wally and talk about the fact that Wally brings children over to talk to them. I don't know. Maybe Kaz should have a look at them. Do they have a working with children's check, I wonder? I don't know, but I think she should start looking at what school they went to because I reckon there's a pattern there. But anyway, so we watched them stage an incredibly successful convoy through regional Victoria. There was this kid in her hometown of Colac who nailed her destroyed her like we will never know your name young king but we will always remember you then they made a triumphant return to the ggs there was maybe four people clapping them the rest of them kind of weren't that fast then they did this very strange this is your life question and answer session with some of the main players and of course michael gray grift was also there to complete his nomadic pilgrimage around australia And it was so dull right till the very end. Tony Ant declared that they were now going to drive around Canberra being pests. But the Freedom Embassy had different ideas. They wanted to go to the cop shop to demand the release of Jan, who had just been arrested at the Suffragette exhibition. Few choice words were exchanged. Then Steve, also from the embassy, got on the mic and said, if people who have left and then come back for a weekend think we're going to do what they say, then they're idiots. Then all the lives ended, apart from one, River Table. It kept going. And then in the <laughs> comments section, someone posted that Michael Gray Grift had just punched Steve out after he called him a pedo. The live ended, immediately deleted. Unfortunately, they have learned that lesson. So now there's no footage and it's a little bit unconfirmed. But then in the comments section of a live, Steve Girlfriend pops in and says, yes, that that did happen, but Steve didn't call him a pedo. He said he aligned himself with pedo. Michael then clocked Steve and apparently then hid behind some of the older women so that Steve couldn't get him. Actual laws. Then Michael hightailed it out of Canberra <laughs> that night. I love it. I love it. I, I swear <laughs> to God, if there's footage, I'm going to find it. I don't care. <laughs> they built some more cubbies. Some cubbies got pulled down. There was more arrests. Some cars got towed. I did, though, feel sorry for nice Jordan. There's two Jordans, which is very confusing. 
One of them's definitely nicer than the other. Jordan <laughs> I'm talking about is the nice kid who was streaming from his PlayStation on the lawn and he had borrowed his mate's generator and the cops put his mate's generator in the back of the van and drove it away. And I actually thought Jordan was going to cry. He didn't care oh, about no. his motorbike. He didn't care about all his stuff. He was just freaking out that he would lose his mate's uh, generator. <sighs> but yeah, Aww. it looks like they're not going home. <laughs> yeah. So, But I do hope that we're not talking about them next week. Fingers crossed. How do you feel about being called a tinfoil hat category? I know how I feel about it, especially when I got dozens of freaking recordings to tell you that I'm not wearing no tinfoil hat. Now it's time for Tinfoil Tales, where Sandy and I are going to show each other and you listeners something random that was seen along the way. Uh, neither of us knows what the other one's going to talk about. So here we go. Okay, Soz, here we go. God literally saved me. It's the most amazing thing that happened. A guy called Zach did a speech and it was a really good speech. And at the end, he read a Bible verse. So I went up to him and I said, hey, I just want to say that was an amazing speech. He goes, oh, okay, he goes, thank you. Tomorrow um, we're doing a prayer service at the Thousand Steps um, in the Dandenongs. And I said, oh, okay, I've never gone to anything like that. So I felt a bit funny because I didn't know anyone. So I just stood to the back of them and I was just like listening to them, whatever. I'm standing there and out of nowhere, I collapsed. Uh, What's your name? uh, When I collapsed, my whole face was numb, my body was numb, my hands were like super glued like this, shut. Couldn't move, completely numb. Then they came and started praying over me. Your name's Jezebel. The demon manifested out of me, and then I was possessed for seven hours. What is your assignment, Jezebel? In the name of Jesus, you must obey. Destroy. Okay, well, in the name of Jesus, we break that. For seven hours, I was on the floor screaming. Um, I was screaming things like, she's mine, she's mine. Get out of her right now. They took me to uh, someone's house. So I was unconscious the whole time. And then they baptized me. Please, please. Out, out, out in the name When they baptized me, that's when I got delivered and the demon went out. That is proof that God is real. Proof that we're in a spiritual world. I'm tapping out of this one. Um, Joel, <laughs> you, can, you can take my part here. I am more than happy to tag in. This is complete horseshit, every single goddamn <laughs> bit of it. And all the editing is just set up to make these like emotive clips that are supposed to provoke some sort of response. My fucking response is disgust. This is someone who is exploiting religion for their own clout-chasing means, and they're doing it in a way that is dishonest, which completely takes away any of the legitimacy that religion comes with. I don't think that religion is inherently illegitimate. I just think when grifters and shitbags use it to perpetuate their own nonsense and make it all about themselves as opposed to, I don't know, Jesus, it's a fucking nightmare. This narcissistic little fucking mosquito should never have anything to do with this kind of mysticism she should just go back to playing with ponies and shutting the fuck up because that to me is blasphemy and i think it's disgusting and if she understood that and if she knew exactly what she was doing i don't think she'd do it but because these people thrive on ignorance and they do everything based on this bizarre deer in the headlights moment of just trying to become someone within this petty fucking inconsequential movement that they'll do stunts like that to get a moan of attention and they will consider it to be virtuous and it's not it's fucking disgusting she sucks they suck god damn that made me annoyed (laughs) yeah yeah this is uh actually for those who don't know her name is danny stanny is what she goes by and she's a bit of an influencer she um did this definitely for attention um It kind of backfired on her, though, because she did not get good um, response 
out of this and yeah. she actually had to close down all of her socials. She's basically oh, wow. unfindable. I did manage to find um, a couple of her little, maybe there was a TikTok or very small amount of people on there. She's dating an influencer. Um, uh, yeah. But, yeah, so definitely this was a, you know, uh, attention-seeking prank and she said but that. But then she got um, cancelled. She got cancelled, yeah. And then there was That's a big funny. fight, though, because she um, ended up having this online sta- stouch with um, Abby Chatfield. Oh, and yeah, yeah. So apparently they went back and forth r- really hard. And yeah, she got. She got majorly cancelled for this, which is good That's, to see. Yeah, good. Bucker. She's terrible. And yeah, like it's just, yeah. it is an absolutely just meaningless display of vulgarity. And um, the fact that she didn't benefit from it, unlike Maria Z, who lies through her gap teeth and makes a fucking <laughs> career out of it. Yeah. Um, you know, and I guess that's the sort of thing. Like, you know, one person can sit there and lie with a straight face and the other one can lie screaming and making a, a scene and then get cancelled. I mean, yeah. half it's probably luck. Yeah, and like she, um, a, a lot of people that um, I speak to that liked her, they said she was actually quite popular because she was, she's good looking. She was a model in the States at one stage and, you know, she was, um, she was dressed up and, you know, she probably could have, made an influencing, you know, career out of this because yeah. she had the looks and everything. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, she just took it too far. She tried to to play it down that um, it was to uh, promote um, a horror film that was coming out. I think it was Conjuring or something. Oh, fuck but, off. But, nah, it didn't. No, nah, nah. she's Lying she's upon done. lying and doubling down, just like, yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. This is the thing that Maria Z would never do, which is to squirm on a lie and then falter on the premise. She would just stand there and just be like, no, nah, Everything I did was true. It was all legitimate, yep. and I regret nothing. If you yep. guys think it's wrong, that's on your heads. And yep. whatever eventually, cost. we'll go. Oh, exactly. At whatever cost, it's exactly Doesn't right. Matter. And it just the the parallel came because I was just thinking of who else lies this egregiously. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Maria Z. She lies yeah. this blatantly as well, but she does it, and it's like it's successful for her. I mean, yeah. it's like you guys have said all through the episode. It's like you said, like, well done. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's like, yeah. You're so awful, but like you're so good at it. Yeah, that's right. It's like, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're kind of impressed, but you're not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and the other thing to also make note of is Zach um, Galloway, who was a big promoter of the freedom movement, tried to do a podcast at the beginning as well, um, but he's a religious man and he just he is going to these freedom marches and he's trying to recruit people into his religion. He's, yeah. you know. yeah bringing them into their yep. meetings and, um, yep. you know, he's at anti, uh, he's at pro-abortion uh, marches trying to, you know, preach to the women there and, yep. yeah, so but yep. he's he's gone the complete religion side of things as well, so he's not so much involved in the movement as much. There's a huge but- amount of religion in the movement, the whole so like, you know, freedom hippie thing. If you look at Dave O'Neggs, he's a massive god botherer. It's like it's all through his stuff. And it's surprising because you don't sort of look at him on face value and think, oh, that guy's, you know, a believer. But he has a lot of God references, but none of them are any kind of thing seem to be identifiable. He doesn't seem like a Pentecostal. He doesn't seem like, you know, any of these denominations I'm used to being able to just pigeonhole. He's just a guy who likes to use the word God because it's convenient for him. And I think that's yeah. just, you know, that's basically him. And, you know, what I would say, very much agreeing with the idea that most people in the movement aren't actually mentally ill and pigeonholing them in that sort of way is really really inconsiderate and quite stupid but yeah. Dave O'Neggs is is like half-time delusional the bloke sees colors and lights he's not well and <laughs> uh, and using God I think is a really good way to basically cover up for his own schizophrenia and bipolar because you know that's the thing oh it's God well it's not mate it's your severe untreated mental illness that really just needs to be dealt with but that includes medication you'd never do it you know yeah that's right Mm. So anyway, that was a little bit inter- interesting. Sorry, Sauce. Uh, that was a little bit too hard <laughs> for Sauce to, to get involved with, but I thought it was a kind of interesting one. It went around and at the time as well, so that was pretty pretty fun at the time. I don't have one this week. I'm sorry. I, 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 failed, <laughs> I failed the assignment this week. So, yeah. That's all right. This was a huge one. This was really big, this one. We put in so much work into this one. Just, yeah, just trying to get Karen Brewer or all, all of her backstory. But that's okay. So I failed the assignment. Um, so to cover up for my abject failure, 
uh, I'm going to plug this this little hole that I was supposed to fill with with a question for you, Sandy. Who is your who's your favorite? Who 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 do you enjoy? And and who do you like the least? Ooh, okay. Um, who's my favorite? Oh, it's hard to say favorite because it's like um, I don't love what they're doing. <laughs> um, but I would say the most interesting one for me that I. Um, when they're online and I just want to go watch is actually probably Danny Searle um, only because he he is so he's so cooked he's so good he's 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 so educated in the conspiracies um, he's written books about him actually just starting to read one now online I've actually found his book and I'm reading it just to I find he's really interesting to get a uh, if you really want to get into the head of a conspiracist I guess and to see what they're saying and what they're what they how they think and Danny has a good way of explaining things that is easy for me to understand and to follow along Mm. um so I think Danny he has some strange ideas and he's done some things in the past that I'm so against um that it quite maybe bordering on dangerous um some of the things he said and he has oh there was one case where he um he called um you know Aboriginal girls racist so he's really he's terrible but in that way but I find him the most interesting as far as looking into conspiracies and what how he thinks and and your worst uh, and my worst would have to be Monica Smith I knew, <laughs> so, I knew it was going to be Monica <laughs> oh I don't know what I uh, just when I just yeah there's so much going on there um with Monica that I just find it very disingenuous um messaging I don't Mm. like the lying like about you know say about the the lies that is talked about with um about the vaccines and being so against lockdown um and there have been things that I've seen her say and there was a Mm. video she put out about elderly people and the way she talks about healthcare workers that Oh, that they're complicit and they should hang. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I find it just too much for me to handle. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's all right. I'm sure she'll find her way one time at some point. I don't know. But she's, I don't know, she's doing what she wants to do and she's being quite successful at it. Um, but yeah, I don't think she's one that I want to keep that should be platformed. <laughs> she's got bad ideas. <laughs> Thank you for that. And I'm sure that. Um everyone what about you actually Soz Um, what's your favorite and you know least favorite as well my favorite is no surprise to anyone my favorite is the true king of Australia (laughs) Um, Stephen Spears will always be my favorite he is a very strange strange man Um, (laughs) he's just very odd but for some reason I I just like him a lot Uh, who do I like the least Uh, it does change from month to month um I, I really don't like michael gray grift um mm-hmm. and i really don't like uh his offside or damien either i don't like what they stand for i don't i don't like this thing that they go with that you know australia used to be a better place you know yeah yearning for old australia it just reads to me that you're yearning for white australia um yeah, yeah. and I, that that makes me you know really uncomfortable probably more so than you know your Peter Liddles and you know they're all harmless idiots as far as I'm concerned but I do think that Michael and Damien yeah could could have a lot of influence in a lot of people's lives for the worst yeah um I actually witnessed Michael Gray Griffith um at a march and he had these um senior women that were with him and they're the hug army and so he had these senior women going along the streets of the cbd giving hugs to everybody um and they're obviously going to be unvaxxed and i just they're older i was like okay you know covid for them is actually a bit more riskier than your average person we hope you enjoyed today's episode of Tinfoil Tales. Um, please feel free to follow us on Twitter at Sauce149 and Sunny Sandy L, that's Sandy with two E's, uh, to see more on the Aussie freedom movement as it happens.
Yeah, well, just to tell us your stories and observations too. What I'd be interested to know is if anyone that's listening, have you gotten, do you know someone who's gotten themselves all caught up in this? I feel like everyone I talk to knows at least one person and I'd love to hear how it's impacting you or their lives. I really enjoyed doing this one. This one was a big one, but if you haven't had enough of Karen Brewer, here's a song and an epic rant we've attached at the end. Sweary words incoming, so be warned. Bye. Bye. I'd like to teach the world to sing I will stand up and surround those gobblers Let them know the fucking jig is up To stand there with all mankind And clean out our land Peace on earth, goodwill to all men So let us join together It's time, it's time, come on, stand up, let's get the job done. The jig is up, the filth must go, come on now, all stand up. G'day everybody, it's Karen Brewer coming at you live. I've had to come into town because I've run out of milk. Now I'm going to address a few things, people, because I need you all street smart, okay? Because come Tuesday the 31st of August, I need you street smart and awake. Now, controlled opposition is real, okay? They're these filthy Freemason demolays, they got a lot riding on this shit, right? Now... I've had a, I put up a post about Pete Evans and uh, um, I'm copping a lot of lip service from people, right? So let's just address it, okay? Pete Evans, aged 23, born in Melbourne, by the way, aged 23, starts to open a few restaurants. Freemason Prominence Building via all these Chef Hat Awards and then he did his thing with Oprah, right? And there's a lot of people given me some stick about Pete Evans, okay? Now, this is the question you've got to ask yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, okay? You've been following all these people, all your Monica Schmitz from Reignite Democracy and maybe your Ricardo Bossy from Waverley College and you've been following people like Pete Evans. Where's it led you, people? You've been listening to them yak yak for a year now. Where has it led you? Okay, well, let's have a look at it. So we've been listening to all the yak yakkers, okay? And where has it led you? Victoria's locked down. Half of bloody Sydney's locked down. Businesses are going broke. People are getting unemployed. Your government's threatening you straight out to your face. Scott Morrison, it's war games and it's on. Rolling out the military. Lieutenant General Fruin, who's out of Xavier College Q in Melbourne. Okay. And so we've got the suicide rate going through the roof. We've got families that are losing sleep every night because they don't know how they're going to pay their mortgage or feed their kids. Right. So you want to keep listening to Pete Evans' yak, yak, and on, eh? You want to keep listening to all the yak, yak. You don't got time to listen to any more yak, yak, right? So here's what you need to do, okay? You think Pete Evans is such a good bloke? That's fabulous. Get on his page and ask him where he will be standing on Tuesday the 31st of August. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Actually standing, okay? Actually making change happen. This is going to sort the men from the boys right quick and it's probably going to burst a few of your bubbles, right? People like David Oneggs, Max Egan and all this other sort of headline acts, I emailed them all this information back in March. Right? And from March until July, right now, where have they led you? Round and round in fucking circles. Standing in parks, telling you to run away. You know, David Oneggs' favourite thing is, oh, get a generator, kid out your ute. Run, run. We're not fucking running. We are standing on Tuesday, the 31st of August. So all these people, all these all these people that think they're they're in love with their profile and, and they've got courage and they do a livey every night. Okay, right. Okay, David Onyx, start announcing where you're going to be standing on Tuesday the 31st of August. Chef Pete Evans, 
There you go, son. There's your invitation. Advertise to the people where you will actually be standing on Tuesday, the 31st of August. Max Egan, it's time you announced where you will be standing on Tuesday, the 31st of August. Let's sort the men from the boys. I'm not taking this shit from these people no more. They run us around in bloody circles and got no direction and no outcome. We've got to make change happen, you and me. And we've got to stand up and we're going to make change happen. On Tuesday, the 31st of August, we will gather at our local council chambers, at our state parliament houses, at the homes of the state governors. Those that can make your way to Canberra, you be at the federal parliament and the home of the governor general. And these people have got until exactly 12 noon to step themselves down. And if they don't, then those state governors and that governor general, they're going to get 10 minutes to decide. They're going to release those documents that Senator Heffernan produced to the Royal Commission to the people unredacted and they're going to issue the writs for a fresh election. Because if you don't, we're going to walk into our parliament houses at exactly 12.10pm and we're going to take our parliaments back. Right? So rather, telling, rather than telling me all those comments of people that, oh, but I think so-and-so is wonderful. You think they're so fucking wonderful? That's fabulous. Get on their page, ask them where they will be standing on Tuesday the 31st of August and get it happening, okay? No more yak yakking. We're standing. We're Anzacs. We don't fucking run. There's nowhere to bloody run anyway. We are island nations. We stand and we make change happen. So get onto all their pages and get onto all their emails and you start asking them where they're going to be standing on Tuesday the 31st of August. Let's sort the men from the boys, Anzac. Let's sort the men from the bullshit. Now I've got to go and get some milk. So tomorrow night, I'll be on my Zoom live, as always. You'll find the codes posted on my Telegram and Instagram account. Please join me. Ask your all, all the questions that you want. I'm happy to stay live on that Zoom for as long as you people want to ask me questions. I've got people in Victoria suicide themselves. I've got families that are worried sick about how they're going to pay their rent or pay their mortgage. We've got young people, young people that are worried about how they're going to pay their rent. We got governments announcing to you they're going to come and round you up, right? I don't have any more time for yak yakers. I need Anzacs with a backbone that know how to stand on their feet because Tuesday the 31st of August, beginning at 9am, we will gather in silence. There will be no speeches, no placards, no noise. We are there. We are standing and we are going to make change happen. So you get on to all these people who you like listening to, yak yakking on, and you start asking them where they will be standing on Tuesday, the 31st of August. You start asking them why they're not talking about this date when they've had all that information since fucking March. We Anzacs are standing on Tuesday, the 31st of August, and we're going to make change happen. Together we are mighty. We fear nothing. We know their fucking fil filthy Freemason Demolay network. We know it. And we know how to tear the fucker down. And that's exactly what we're doing. I'll see you all later. Have a great day. Bye, folks. <laughs>